between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches create additional revenue streams, stop trading time for dollars. Um, they hold you accountable to achieve your biggest goals with a step-by-step roadmap. Check out rise25.com. It's run by myself, co-founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. I am very excited to introduce Mark Werner. He's a founder of Nature's Sleep and Ghostbed.com. He founded the company in 2001 and grew it to over 11 factory and warehouse locations worldwide in the U.S., Brazil, and Spain. They've sold millions of mattresses and offer a 20-year warranty. And he learned the value of maintaining the high-quality products from his family of inventors and innovators in the latter business. And I just found out talking to him that we are actually distant cousins by marriage. We're related. So, Mark, thanks for joining me. A pleasure to be here. How did you initially get in front of people? What were some of the, the methods you did to you know get that initial buzz and so people started spreading it? A lot of a lot of missionary work, you know, just knocking out a lot of doors and calling a lot of people and getting the door slammed and being the new guy. And, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, no, 100 percent. It doesn't happen overnight. So, you know, I started the nature sleep thing 15 plus years ago and knocked on a lot of doors, got, you know, disappointed many times. But you just can't give up. You just have to keep doing it and doing it and putting up with the crap and just keep doing it. <laughs> That's all you can do. OK. And just keep the hard work. And you just you, you can't um, you can't get too disenfranchised. You have to keep yeah. going and going. And on the ghost bed side, which is our direct to consumer side, yeah, so that other of, side, the nature sleep, is more you go wholesome. from the go to the different mattress stores or companies or uh, sorry the, right. the stores. That's, that's either a dot com, you know, um, an Amazon dot com or Costco dot com or you know Costco retail, you know, or a retail store where it's a brick and mortar. That's what Nature Sleep does. Mattresses, right. pillows, toppers, dog beds, memory foam slippers, et cetera, yeah. all kinds of different variations, et cetera, that you could buy physical brick and mortar or on their respective online um, stores. Right. Um, Ghostbed is my you know, sister company where that's my what's called direct-to-consumer, the new right. direct-to-consumer space. And that's different because now I can directly interact with the customer. I can advertise and I can engage with the end customer and have a one-on-one relationship that I've never had that before because I've always gone through wholesale distribution. Right. You know, in the ladders, we sold Home Depot. They sold the customer. I didn't know the customer. Mm. You know, I, I see people that have my product, but I didn't interact with them. Now I get to interact with them. It's awesome, you know, because I get the feedback. Right. What they like, what they don't like, um, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a whole customer support team that's interacting with them, either telephonically, web chats, or um, social media. I mean, the, the amount of questions that come into the social media is nonstop. Yeah. Most of them are very nice. Some people, you know, not all people are very nice. <laughs> so they can be a little aggressive. You know, maybe they're a little bit uh, inebriated. Maybe they're just had a bad day. Maybe they just feel like dumping on someone. But, you know, they can light it up a little bit. But our game plan is always be nice. Always nice. so, so, Mark, I mean, you are super busy, busy enough. What made you decide to torture yourself and create Ghostbed? Um, my Ghostbed plan was laid out years ago. Was it? Okay. Years ago. Um, you know, the original mattress I designed for Ghostbed was in 07. Um, the only change I made to the, my original design was I substituted the memory foam for the newer technology today, which is gel memory foam. Hmm. Um, obviously some new fabric technologies, yeah. but the original design, cause I knew it was a great design that I was, uh, made for s- some other retailers in 07, um, was just a great design. Um, but I knew you had to go direct because you, did. Okay. It, Cause you could have just as easily brought that to your, you know, nature sleep and have another product line, you know? Oh, I, I could have, and I have, and I sold a similar bed, um, 
pretty much through the, the nature sleep. But um, the the market is changing. So you've got a consolidation um, in the brick and mortar space, massive consolidation. So there's fewer customers, just like in every industry. There's only it's an oligopoly. There's only a handful of people. Yeah. So the smaller guys are weaker and they are uh, higher credit risk, low, all kinds of other challenges, uh, unfortunately. And the bigger guys have gotten much more much bigger and and more powerful and more demanding i mean just in our industry recently you had mattress firm the biggest retailer out there get divorced with their biggest supplier tempur-pedic sealy mm. so here's here's a thing where tempur-pedic's probably doing 700 million dollars worth of their three billion in sales with one customer Jeez. and that that's at wholesale so on retail that's probably a billion and a half dollars worth of retail sales for mattress firm right. and the two firms had enough disagreement about whatever the issues are, and let's leave those to them, um, yeah. that got divorced. And it was a very public divorce, and it's very painful that they're just going through the, the first couple months of it. And I'm sure it will be you know, a pretty big game changer in our space. How does that affect you? Um, it, it probably, probably in a couple of ways, um, both of which I would say would be in a positive way mm -hmm. um, in terms of an opportunist way. Um, but I wouldn't want to say too much more. Um, Mattress Firm's a great company, and we, we, we are fortunate enough to supply them. Yeah. Uh, and um, Tempur-Pedic, just a competitor. Temper and Sealy is a competitor. But, you know, really good, smart people and make good products and been a real pioneer in the industry for a very long time. So these things happen. Um, but it's, a, it's a really the result, I think, of the concentration of power. And when, you know... When there's fewer players, they just both have a lot of power. Right. Uh, and so, you know, you, you it's more difficult in the business world to, to deal in those situations. You know, rather than having, a, you know, a thousand customers, you've got, you know, 10 customers doing the same business of a, as a thousand. It changes that dynamics quite yeah. a bit on both sides. Um, and that's the beauty and kind of the evolution of the direct to consumer business. Yeah. Because now I can, you know, deal direct with the end consumer give a much better um, deal to the end consumer because you're you are eliminating some layers of distribution costs um, and um, the consumer wins consumer always wins when the consumer wins everyone mm -hmm. wins because that's what really matters mm -hmm. and, I, and the consumer savvy and you know they're always going to find that the most efficient thing and if you look at most retailing venues today they're an outcry of some next generation from prior things you know the home depot got successful because all these other distributors, the roofing distributor and the plumbing distributor and electrical distributors were all little kind of um, industries of distribution networks that were multiple step distributions. Like who needed to hand off a pipe three times before the plumber got it? If the plumber went basically right to the guy who made the pipe, right. it would be cheapest for everybody, right? Yeah. So now he can uh, uh, cost effectively go to a Home yeah. Depot who can afford to buy in mass volume, right. big bulky things, and let the plumber buy it at a cost effective rate. Yeah. But he, as Home Depot became successful, it's because all these other kind of dis cottage industry distributors went out of business. Uh, no different than what Amazon's doing to all of retail today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, from Macy's to Kohl's to Nordstrom's, Bed Bath, you name it, everyone's continues to restructure and reorganize and try to get the omni-channel thing right right it's it's gonna be a hell of a challenge and as soon as they're you know they're done with this restructuring a year from now they'll have the next restructuring it'll be more stores and more people laid off because the amazon effect is monstrous i mean people need to understand embrace amazon they're a phenomenal company and it's just an easy shopping experience they made it really easy yeah. and they spent long time building out building out incredible you know network on all fronts it's a very the most powerful you know startup of all times and um but it's a real threat to m majority of uh, of retailers like brick and mortar yeah yeah it's a real threat where can people buy ghostbed obviously they can go to ghostbed.com where else can they purchase it so you can go to ghostbed.com or amazon mm-hmm and we've kept the distribution very, very limited to that. Mm -hmm. What I see, Mark, you do really well is you surround yourself by a good team. Um, could you talk about how you bring on a team for Nature Sleep and Ghost Bed? Because I also saw, I think there was a high level person in Tempur-Pedic and you probably have like a, a number of people who have uh, come together and helped 
you know, build the company? We have hired people slowly, um, and we've tried to find people that kind of share our kind of work ethic and core values. Um, I like a safe environment. I like people to be treated well. I don't like a pressure cooker. I'm a workaholic. I don't expect people to do what I do. You know, I'm right. 60 years old. I get home at 10 o'clock at night. I, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy. Right. I like it. I don't, I don't mind it. My wife accepts it. Um, and, you know, we're just in a crazy growth mode the last couple of years, especially. So it's even more taxing. But, you know, we, we've tried to hire the kind of right people. And our team is long term. Uh, I don't have much turnover. Right. Um, we try to pay people well. We treat people well. We give good benefits. We try to make it a solid environment. What do you hire for first when you're initially hiring? Because like you said, you're hiring slow. Who do you hire well, first? You know, at the very beginning, I, you know, I, I think you, you – like in my situation, I'm able to do a number of things. I can develop products. I understand economics. Um, I, can, I understand logistics. Uh, I understand sales, and I can sell. So I, I can wear a lot of hats. Right. I'm used to that. So um, it depends, you know, for different startup entrepreneurs what their skill sets are. If they're pretty young and they don't have much experience, um, they might only have one core strength. You know, maybe he's a programmer or something. Right. Uh, he's a programmer and needs to find the resources elsewhere. But you you got to have sales. You know, I, I always say you can have a great product, but if you don't have sales, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. Right. Everything starts with the top line. you got to have sales. And then you got to have some kind of finance accounting function. So you got to have capital. You got to be able to account for everything. You got to know what things cost. You can't fake yourself. You got to know what things cost. And you, you and you can't bullshit yourself whatsoever. And so you, you need someone that can help you and, and be very honest in that um, role. And um, then, you know, especially on the digital side, this is a marketing game. You got to have the digital marketing strength. You got to have the marketing strength. You've got to have an operations person that really understands the, the, the core issues, the product, the, the purchasing of the product, the contract in the product, the, the quality of the product, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you bring that together and then the customer experience people and that team and processing of orders. Um, you know, I always say here we're kind of a transaction factory. In the old days, we used to get orders from big accounts and you'd ship truckloads, you know, 10 truckloads of ladders for this guy. Um, one order, 10 truckloads. Now, right. each truck loads, you know, 400 orders. So now you get 4,000 orders instead of one order. So now you got to process 4,000 orders. Yeah. Uh, and, logistics, you know, make sure you, yeah. Logistics, make sure everything's entered properly and the right item gets shipped to the right person at the right time. And the tracking number gets to everybody. So it's a different kind of uh, game today. Yeah. And you have, have the systems that set that up. You need the, you know, the IT people. Um, and then you need to kind of take advantage of these great, software systems and cloud-based systems and the evolution of it because it's really changed um, over the years. And I've watched the change from traditional accounting to the type of way we do accounting today. I mean, debits and credits haven't changed, but just the efficiency of the software to handle this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when information comes in, you want to capture it once and explode it through your system yeah. so you keep touching it and re-entering it. What kind of software do you use to run uh, the e-commerce side of things? So... At the Ghostbed, we use um, WordPress as the the software, which is very popular, and then we use WooCommerce, mm -hmm. uh, the shopping engine. For um, running our business, we're actually just transitioning to a, an upgraded system on April 1st, um, after a year of hard you know conversion and training and research, to NetSuite, which is now part of Oracle. Mm. So we're going to a complete cloud-based, cutting-edge system with NetSuite, and mm -hmm. we're very excited about that. Nice. And, and that will encompass the, it's what I call ERP. It'll be the, like inventory management type of stuff too. Or? Everything. Yeah. Order entry, inventory, financials, you know, marketing. It's, it's the, the, the everything system. Mm -hmm. And, um, we did a lot of evaluations and we decided that made the most sense for our, our, uh, circumstances. So we go live with that. Nice. And, um, and then everything's, you know, tied back to your mobile phone. So you have, uh, complete visibility of whatever you need and it's great and it's also um it's a complete cloud system so we're headquartered in south florida so we do occasionally get the hurricanes and lose power for a week or so um so that's a right. it's it's a smart backup yeah mark 
thank you so much for your time. Um, this has been hugely valuable. I have one or two last questions for you. Every should, you know, everyone should check out naturessleep.com. I guess for this purpose, people should go more towards ghostbed.com, ghostbed. right? Yeah. So they ghostbed. should ghostbed.com and check out, you know, you have a bunch of different products, pillows, beds, um, anywhere else we should point people towards as far as the ghost bed side. I think that would be good. You know, obviously our Facebook page has a lot of traffic and a lot of fun stuff. Um, but the website is, is very informative yeah. and has a lot of information. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, part of our value proposition is basically the ghost bed is for under $800, you get a queen mattress delivered and we ship in 24 hours mm. and you have a 101 night sleep trial. So if you don't like it, we pick it up and we donate it to a charity. So you don't have to worry about that. And um, it's the same basic mattress I sell brick and mortar people i won't mention their names but major names that they would be selling for three thousand dollars yeah that's amazing so kind of shows you the value proposition for sure and we we back it with 20 years worth of warranty quality yeah so. um so last question mark is one i always ask since it's in inspired insider what's been the lowest business moment and on the flip side what's been one of the proudest moments in business for you? Well, um, I think one of the lowest would be a pretty sad story where one of our female employees, um, who's in the computer programming area, um, was coming to work last year, um, at seven 30 coming into just going to get out of her car in the parking lot and her crazy estranged husband, assaulted her and then mm. doused her with gasoline and lit her on fire. Holy cow. And it was all caught on like uh, office cameras. Um, and um, that was a pretty horrifying thing that um, I would even know of that, yet alone someone that we, you know, works for us that we really care about that was really hurt in a very horrible way. Wow. And so that was just a very, very low moment. Um, and she probably would have died, but we, we were able to get her to the UM Jackson Burn Center, and she was in a coma for a few months, and she's recovering. It's really mm, horrible. She survived. Wow. She survived, and we've kept her job open for her. So, um, and we kept taking care of her, and um, so we look forward for her actually coming back here hmm. uh, in the next three. Sorry or four to hear months. that. Jeez. So that was a very very sad moment for all of us, and um, as far as. Um, a high moment, you know, I think a high moment for me because I'm really into the um, the family business stuff. So I'm really happy that my daughter, who's really important, um, and my wife works with us full time, nice. works here. And, you know, in the future, I look forward to my sons working here and then my uh, grandkids. So that's kind of a high moment. And we get a lot of reviews on the ghost bed and they just flow in constantly all day long. And they're just they're just great. And it's just it's a real buzz for me personally when I see that. I had back pain and I slept on this and it's gone. I'm pregnant and I had a couldn't sleep and it's gone. I had insomnia. It's gone. You know, all these things that and the success no stories. Idea yeah. How positive it had a, an effect on people's lives. Cause sleep I know is so important. And when I, you just keep seeing these stories every day, come in and come in, it's, that's a high point. That to me is a big win. Yeah. Mark, I want to be the first one to thank you. Hopefully when you come through Chicago, we'll get to meet in person. Everyone should check out ghostbed.com and uh, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find this.